So Neil says that the cosmic perspective is a spiritual, um, can even be redemptive, but not necessarily religious. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Well, that's, you know, I, I think I understand where he's coming from. Neil uh, is agnostic. And so, if, and again, I don't want to speak for him, but this is my interpretation based on my conversations with him, that uh, for him, the word spiritual uh, is is sort of like cleaner than the word religious. That the word religious has a lot of baggage that's, that you know people would connect to organized religion. So my perspective on that is one of my great loves in life uh, uh, is word are words. I love words and I love etymology and where words come from. And when you look at the word religion, uh, the Latin is legare, so re legare is the, the root. And legare is the same word that we get our word ligament from. So what does a ligament do? It connects things. And so the original meaning of religion was the idea of connecting or reconnecting, in a sense, overcoming that sense of separation. So when you understand it that way, it's really kind of a cool word. Um, but I realize that a lot of people have baggage around it. Um, I try to resurrect words, and when they've been co-opted, bring them back, you know, a little bit. But um, but I understand, and a lot of people are more comfortable using the word spiritual. And spiritual, the word spirit, comes from, uh, in different languages, they all kind of come from the word for breath. So, for example, uh, pneuma, like we are word pneumonia, uh, is related to that. Uh, ruach in Hebrew, uh, prana in, in, in Sanskrit. But it's always about the breath, so the breath is the life. So the word spirit has that sense of life. And, and of course, the, the meaning of spiritual is generally something that transcends our ordinary pedestrian view of things. Um, and it can be dualistic too because spirituality can sometimes be seen as the opposite of materialism but I don't think that's what Neil is implying I think what he's saying is that the cosmic perspective is redemptive now I'm not a big fan of the word redemptive because for me that word kind of connects to sacrificial ideas and that you know we were lost and we have to be saved and things like that and I'm not I'm not really into that sort of paradigm, but rather uh, I think of it as liberative, liberating. That when we, uh, a spiritual practice ideally liberates us from a limited perspective. And I think in that sense, that's what he means. But I still dig the word religion. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's one of those things that's gotten a bad rap. Yeah, uh, you just of my personal experience, uh, knowing and just having conversations with folks around the conversation between spirituality and religion, yeah. um, there's kind of the sense of a doctrine attached to religion. Uh, being a Buddhist, I guess, monk or teacher or whatever your teacher, preference, yeah. uh, do you feel that there is a sort of doctrine that can align with the cosmic perspective or is it more just the the sense of just the, the religion in itself? Well, I think it's very important to look at the difference between the word doctrine and dogma. Mm -hmm. So doctrine is really just a body of teachings. And those body of teachings are ones that you find useful. Um, but you don't necessarily have to believe in them uh, in, a, in an ultimate way. In other words, a doctrine can be something that is created and has a very practical or heuristic sense, but that doctrine can be changed and expanded upon. That's how Buddhism kind of looks at its doctrines. Dogma, on the other hand, means that you have to give your assent to that idea where you're not in the club anymore, mm -hmm. right? So when I think of how the Buddhist doctrine plays in, yes, I think that Buddhist doctrine is based upon the same fundamental insights as what Neil's talking about in the cosmic perspective. You know, from the very earliest times, Buddhists 
kind of had a sense, not how we talk about evolution, but, but did talk about it in the sense of things coming from one source and sort of evolving over time. So if, therefore Buddhists have no issue with evolution, for example. Buddhists don't really have a concept of a creator god uh, in the sense of a deity who is a power out there like Jehovah or Zeus. So we don't really have that concept either. So there's a lot of things for us that are congruent. And when someone comes here and wants to know about the universe, you know, I always say, well, watch Cosmos, you know, and we'll talk about it. Because for, for me, that is our story. And I think that's the part of the cosmic perspective that I really get excited about, helping people understand, that you are a part of this cosmic drama. And that your being, your consciousness matters. So yeah, for me, the idea is to help people see themselves as a part of this grand cosmic story. You know that they are the, you know, the the, the shining uh, fulfillment of all this evolutionary history, and we are like the universe, seeing and dancing and singing and experiencing and that's how I look at it like as, as we wake up to this cosmic perspective we become a part of that dance in a way that we never were consciously before and so it becomes very exciting and then the idea is to help other people sort of wake up to that perspective and I do think that it has an impact on our social issues because I think on our social issues whatever it may be at any given time it's usually because of certain characteristics that are involved. And one is the sense of separation. That somehow I am not you, and you are not me. And we're not the other. And so that breeds fear, uh, and, and xenophobia, and all the prejudice, and racism, all those things. But it, that, that, that's one aspect that that uh, is critical about in overcoming. And I think the other part of it is, is the, just the practical tools. Like one of the things I like to do, and we do here as a community or Sangha, is we'll do what we call socially engaged koans. So in the Zen tradition, a koan is a, uh, a story that helps you to awaken to oneness. And so uh, a koan can be an ancient story, you know, a dialogue between a teacher and student, or like a parable, or it can be the, you know, the question that rises in your life, that if you open yourself to it and bear witness to it, that the healing action will flow. And so we will take an issue, so let's say like capital punishment, for example, um, and we'll, we'll sit together and each person will share you know, from the heart, their view of things, and then we'll we'll write down each of those sharings, and then we'll use a mindfulness process to look at where did so when I made that statement, where did my thoughts come from? Where did my beliefs come from? Mm -hmm. And are those beliefs based on fear and separateness, or are they based on connectedness and oneness? Mm -hmm. And so it's amazing how you can get people even to have very different views at first, to find that, that ground where they're in common and really be touched and changed by the other's point of view. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And I think that's some of the practical stuff that, that um, we just tipped, tipped the iceberg in terms of what the Dharma could do mm -hmm. in, in social settings. Too often what happens, I think, is you know these issues get talked about in a dualistic way. And my side is the side of the angels, and yours is the side of the devils, of course, right? But then we get into that sort of, that game. And these practices are getting us to go beyond those dualities to get at the heart of, you know, why am I doing this? I have this thing, when somebody does something terrible, I ask myself, why would I do that? You know, and I, and I mean it sincerely. I, I really associate and bear witness to it and say, why would I do that? Or when someone does something really wonderful, I say, wow, look what I did. 
<laughs> because I really feel like that way I can enter into it from a, that different perspective. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very powerful and transformative. And I've used it, you know, in different sort of socially engaged settings. And I found that I was more successful because of that approach. So that's why I really do believe that causal perspective can have a big impact on us, not just from a personal perspective, but a corporate perspective. It's fantastic. So that's kind of it. Uh, thanks very much, man. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing some of your wisdom and insight. <laughs> All right.